be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. If you put the thing in the back in the, uh, reconsidered back in the committee, I mean, what for is it to raise it again at some point? For well, vote? as I said on the floor, uh, there, there's no plans at this time to revisit this. However, if we didn't make the motion to reconsider, we would be prevented from revisiting it during the session. Uh, obviously, the story, as I said, has had a lot of different chapters. Um, you know, if we get more chapters that uh, change the dynamics of, of what's going on with the Attorney General, then we have the ability to revisit it. But unless something new comes uh, to our attention, uh, there would be no, no, would be no more action on that resolution. So How disappointed are you that not enough Democrats switch sides? What's that? How disappointed are you that not enough Democrats uh, switch sides? Yeah, look, uh, as I said, you know, this is this was not a partisan issue. This was not a partisan issue. Um, every member has to make their own vote. You know, we had a Republican vote no, they had a Democrat vote yes. Uh, it's a tough it's a tough position for members to be put in. And you know, I respect everyone's vote and why they made it. And um, you know, everyone it's, it's a personal vote. Uh, Joe, why did you feel it was important to go through with this, even knowing ahead of time that you probably only had one at most two votes? You know, why put these votes up? Sure. Well, clearly the Supreme Court acted, I believe, in a very quick manner upheld the suspension of her law license. New justices of the same party upheld that same decision. And uh, quite frankly, uh, we as a committee made a decision to wait for that. And uh, uh, we weren't counting votes. Uh, we were doing, in my, in my view, uh, this was the right thing to do. Uh, I would rather go down the path of doing the right thing and come to a dead end than not go down a path at all and have done nothing. And, uh, you know, Brad, clearly, uh, you wrote a book about corruption in Pennsylvania. Uh, the Senate had it within its grasp of doing something about corruption in Pennsylvania. This isn't about her corruption. This is about the loss of a law license. And it clearly, clearly uh, has been a circus and continues to be that in the view of many Pennsylvanians and uh, certainly in my view. Uh, so uh, going forward with this, I think it was just uh, clearly the right thing to do. The Senate had the, uh, the duty to make a vote. The committee did a fantastic bipartisan um, uh, report, and um, it was just time to do it. You guys kept saying that politics wasn't a part of this, but how do you, how do you explain to average people watching this and say, well, all the one Democrat voted one way and all the one Republican voted the other? It broke on basically political lines. Well, look, I can't speak to the motives of why people voted against it or why anybody voted for it. Uh, but clearly, uh, those that uh, made their votes will have to defend their votes. Uh, but there was nothing uh, at all. If this would have been a Republican in this position, we would have acted sooner. How do you know that? How do I know what? That if this were a Republican in that position, we would have acted sooner because I would have convened the committee sooner. Any other questions? Yeah, Senator Porter, you made several points, both in committee and here, about um, Ms. Kane not being supervised as an attorney, and that, that was part of the record. Is it incumbent upon you as an attorney to take that record and forward it to the lawyer discipline board? Uh, I can tell you that individuals uh, have already done that. Uh, I believe one individual of the committee has already done that as well. Uh, at one point when we received some correspondence from her and the correspondence was on her letterhead, uh, those of us that are attorneys uh, on that committee sought advice as to whether we were required to send something and basically we were told it was within our discretion that we were not obligated to but was within our individual discretion to do it. I believe so you see a violation uh, we sought counsel advice on that and counsel advice said that in this case it was discretionary whatever it was reported I can tell you that to my knowledge uh, it was reported yes Senator what Gordon what's next what's next what's next as I said earlier uh, this matter is closed for now uh, we do have the option to reconsider it at some point if <laughs> events dictate that. But for now, uh, you know, we made our vote and it's time to move on. Did Kathleen Kane get up easy today? Oh, okay. You know, that's for everyone individual opinion to make, uh, to make their own decision on. Um, you know, if it was political, as you may have suggested, we wouldn't have voted. 
if we were worried about winning and losing and play, we wouldn't have voted because Senator Costa had indicated ahead of time that he didn't have very many votes, if any. Um, our members wanted to do the right thing. You know, these people did a lot of hard work on the committee. Uh, and if you, as an individual, um, <laughs> come to the determination that we need an attorney general with an active law license, then we are compelled uh, as members of the Senate to vote uh, and take this action. We came to that conclusion. And even though we knew that there, there would not be enough votes uh, to remove her, it was still important that our duties, our job, was to make this vote. Having gone through this, did you see anything with that constitutional provision that would maybe warrant revising it using more modern language that dates to 1871? There was some question about the governor's role. Anything no, I, I think, I, look, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I think the Constitution is very clear. Uh, the, the committee researched it. Uh, and unanimously voted that uh, this was a provision that uh, was allowable by the Senate uh, to, to move in this fashion. Uh, so fortunately it's not used very often and, and hopefully won't be used again anytime soon. Uh, if the, but if events dictate it, I think it's very clear a process for the Senate to follow. Speaking of that, as you guys were debating in there across the hall, House was starting its process of impeachment. Any reaction to that? No. I mean, we are obviously have a role if they if they file articles of impeachment and pass them and send them to us, we'll, we'll address it at that point in time. But uh, uh, we don't have any reaction at this point. I was hoping you could also react to a statement that Kathleen Kane's office put out just a couple minutes ago in which she basically says that this is a victory and a win because it will allow her and her office to continue to expose uh, the email scandal that everybody has been writing about now for 18 months, the suggestion being that this process was somehow geared towards stopping that. Can you address that, please? Um, I don't know if anyone wants to take that. Look, she's entitled to her opinion. Um, that had nothing to do with the process. As I said on the floor, we didn't ask for this. Uh, this was something the Supreme Court put in our hands when they suspended her license. And, um, you know, we went through a process, a very fair process. Uh, every member reached their own conclusion on what that uh, determination should be of, her, of the future of the Attorney General. And we're proud of the process that we put forward. I think we set proper precedent. Uh, if this ever does come about again, and uh, obviously since she's entitled to her opinion, but uh, certainly I had no weighing on us whatsoever. I, I, I'd just like to, to comment as the, the writer of the letter to Deputy Attorney General Beamer about the emails. Certainly I have no interest in stopping or preventing the appropriate review and legal analysis of that. My intention in writing that letter was to get more information about how that contract was executed, whether it was done properly and legally. The response we received from Deputy Bremer certainly raises significant questions about whether the, the Attorney General was acting appropriately and had the authority to do so. Very relevant information and something that I did not raise today on the floor because it was out of the purview of the scope of the law license, but I clearly believe that that information and the response that I received raises significant and very serious concerns. Given your votes uh, today, uh, do you believe that her remaining now in office is somehow going to make that office suffer, her being at the top of the helm of the Attorney General's office? Well, you know, clearly through the testimony we, we received at the hearing, there are significant challenges in operating this office and how it moves forward. Um, we have uh, thoroughly, you know, read the testimony and you will see the concerns by the four deputies that clearly outlines the challenges in front of them. I think those challenges continue and they may um, increase, uh, but, uh, you know, clearly um, her operation of that office uh, will continue and uh, we will see in the days and weeks and months ahead what that looks like. Well, thank you all very much. Thank Thanks. you.